In this tutorial, we will discuss ion exchange chromatography. We will start our discussion from the introduction of the chromatography and then we will move towards the main components of uh, any chromatography. After that, we will talk about the main components of this particular ion exchange chromatography and we will also know the instrumentation. Uh, you can also say the material required for this uh, chromatography and the working of this ion exchange chromatography or you can say the procedure of this ion exchange chromatography and at the end we will talk about the principle through which our this ion exchange chromatography is actually functional or you can say what is the principle we will know about that so let's start from the very first point the introduction of the chromatography what is chromatography it is actually a separation technique that is used to separate the components of a mixture it is a technique through which we are actually separating uh, the components of a mixture we have a mixture and we want to separate its components the technique that you are using to do the separation of this mixture into components that technique is actually known as chromatography and we have different types so today we are going to talk about the ion exchange chromatography now let's come towards the next point that is the main components of any type of chromatography so we have different types of the chromatography and we have two very important components that are actually common in all the types now what are those two very common and important components stationary phase and mobile phase stationary phase is known as the fixed phase and mobile phase is known as the movable phase or the phase which is moving so we do have a phase which is stagnant fixed phase and we have another phase which is actually moving that is known as mobile phase so we have actually two phases and these two phases are actually required in each and every type of the chromatography and these two phases are actually responsible to do the separation of the particular mixture or the sample that you want to separate into components means these two are actually helping us in separation now what are the main components of ion exchange chromatography and the case is obvious i told you that these two are the main components in every chromatography yes we do have the same two components in the same chromatography but the examples are different in this chromatography our stationary phase is resin what resin and remember this resin may be positively charged or negatively charged okay this resin may be positively charged or negatively charged and we have the mobile phase which may be a solvent or a mixture of solvent we can have any okay it is depending upon what types of sample we are going to separate uh, then according to that particular sample we will just decide type of solvent to be used okay so let's come towards the next point that is the instrumentation or the materials required to perform the ion exchange chromatography what materials we need or what instruments we need we need a solvent reservoir in which we will place our mobile phase we need a column in which we will fix our stationary phase and we need our sample which is going to be separated that's it in short and the next we have is the working now how these instruments actually work let's know that so here we have first of all the stationary phase uh, number one and number two i told you guys that we have positive and negatively charged stationary phases means these resins are actually positively charged or negatively charged maybe any okay it is depending upon what type of the sample is with us if we want to separate the negatively charged sample into its components okay for that we will be using this positively charged resin and if you want to separate out the components of the positively charged sample so for that we will use the negatively charged resin stationary phase here we are using the positively charged resin stationary phase for the negatively charged sample and here we are using the negatively charged resin for the positively charged sample now how is the mechanism let's know that so from the solvent reservoir we will just run our mobile phase through this particular stationary phase and in the meanwhile we must have loaded our sample on this stationary phase or sometimes in some cases we actually mix up our mobile phase and sample here in the solvent reservoir and then we are running both well in some other practical performances it is shown that uh, we are actually first of all loading our sample after that we are running the mobile phase on the loaded sample so what is happening here suppose we have the negatively charged sample and we want to separate the components present in this negatively charged sample what will happen is we pour the sample or as we load the sample this sample will start displacing the functional group attached with this particularly positively charged resin you know our resin which is positively charged and negatively charged we have two types of the resins these resin the resin that is positively charged will be having a negatively charged functional group now this is the particular positively charged resin and this negatively charged resin and beside these resins beside this positive we have a negative functional group here i have mentioned that this is the negative functional group 
here we have the resin this is our resin and this negatively charged is our actually functional group and here in this particular column we have negatively charged resin and a positively charged functional group so what we have if our resin is positively charged this one this is positively charged it must be having a negatively charged here is a negative sign negatively charged functional group okay and the same is the case with the negatively charged resin so now this resin is actually negatively charged this is having positively charged functional group so positively charged functional group is supposed to be present with this negatively charged resin so what we have we have our resin plus functional group attached to this now what is happening here this sample which is having negatively charged in this particular column and now i'm talking about this column this sample now the components of this sample they're actually all negatively charged what they will do they will start displacing these negatively charged functional groups then these will start attaching here now before they have our black now what i'm doing now just i'm removing these blacks now i'm attaching the negative now this negative is actually the components of our this sample now what is happening here our negatively charged simple components are attaching with the positively charged resin and the functional groups of the resins are actually removed so somehow exchange took place here between the ions now the very one thing that we came to know is that here ion exchange is taking place due to which this chromatography is known as ion exchange chromatography and another point is about a question that if this negatively charged components are bonding with this positively charged our resin now this must bond together and must not move and the question is very accurate so now where is the separation done or where is the illusion done we don't see anything yes we don't see now let me tell you people about that particular case that how we separate now first of all this sample did the displacement or the exchange of the ions now the next thing is that we are actually running our this mobile phase when this mobile actually enters this particular stationary phase now the mobile phase has the ability to break the bond between these ions of the components in the stationary phase so like this our components ions will be free and they will start moving out and here we'll just collect this is how the separation is done and the collection is done and the same case is for the positively charged samples components when the positively charged sample is actually loaded so this will start displacing these positive positive functional groups now the components which are positively charged will actually start bonding with negatively charged resin and the positive functional groups are actually displaced by these components now what will happen next is that we will run again our mobile phase and this mobile phase will again break the bond between the stationary phase and the components and then the components will be free and we will just collect our positively charged components here so this is how the separation in the components collection is done and uh, from this particular uh, performance we actually get two types of the name for this particular exchange you guys know that positively charged ion is known as cation and the negatively charged ion is known as anion if you, feel you guys are feeling confusion let me tell you people about a trick that how to remember or memorize the cation and the anion difference you know this is the ion with you if you just cut this this will become positively charged and this positively charged is actually cut ion now just imagine that this is a cation okay now just uh, displace u by a now consider this cut ion as a cation so you know that your positively charged ion is actually a cation so consider that this charge is actually the cut one so like this it will be easy for you to memorize it is actually a trick if it is not fixing in your mind leave the trick and come to the point the positively charged ions are called cation negatively charged ions are called anion now due to these two charges we get two types of the chromatography if we are separating the positively charged ions by this chromatography then this particular type of the chromatography is known as cationic exchange chromatography and if we are separating the negatively charged sample through this particular chromatography instrumentation then that type of the chromatography is known as anionic exchange chromatography now you can guess from the name and tell that cationic exchange is actually exchanging the cations which are the functional groups available with the resin and anionic exchange are actually displacing or exchanging the ions which are the negatively charged functional group present with the positively charged resin you can see that these uh, negative positive charges are actually changing the places with the negative and positive functional groups of the stationary phases so in short once again if you are separating the positive that is known as cationic exchange and if you are separating the negative sample that is known as anionic exchange now let's come towards this principle here our sample is actually exchanging with the ions so due to which our principle becomes ion exchange 
and due to the same principle this chromatography is known as ion exchange chromatography i hope you got if still you have any kind of question please feel free to ask us in the comment box welcome for the answers thank you for watching